Hey, I'm Josh Smith and welcome to Rain and I'm so glad you're here, babes. This podcast is all about opening up, having important conversations and celebrating successes, as well as overcoming obstacles to reign over our own lives. I love to chat to people and I always find things in these conversations to take away and use in my own life. So I really hope you'll find the same as well. Welcome to Rain. Young Royals fans, you are in for a treat, as if being joined on the last episode by Prince Wilhelm himself. Edwin reading was it enough for ya? In this episode, we're joined by Omar Rudberg, who plays Simon. If you are new to the Swedish Netflix show, get ready as the tale of Prince Wilhelm falling for Simon after being sent to boarding school is so good. And trust me, you're gonna be as obsessed as I am. Today, following season two's drama, Omar joins me to talk about the plot twist behind the scenes action and just how problematic coffee breath is for kissing scenes. I love what Omar has to say about breaking down stereotypes surrounding masculinity, his journey with his mental health, and how filming the show's more intimate scenes made him reflect on his relationship with body image. There is so much to take away from this chat with Omar, so crowns at the ready. Let's reign like those young royals. Well, hello, how are you? I'm great. I'm so good. How are you? I'm good. I mean, I'm slightly shook because I watched the finale of season two of Young Royals just this morning. Okay. And okay. I was not ready for the speech. How shook were no, you really? by the speech? I wasn't ready for it. I didn't see it coming. I didn't think really? he was going to stand up and admit to the fact that he was in the relationship. I was like, no way. Like, I was I was so oh shocked. How shocked were you when you were filming it? I was just standing there thinking like, wow, Edwin is really such a good actor. Because it was such a feeling when he was standing there doing his speech, you know um and all that and i was just like wow this is this is amazing yeah mm. it felt awesome when we were when we were standing there yeah did you want to like jump up at one point and be like that's my prince <laughs> doing it <laughs> yeah i mean yes why not but the thing is like in that scene everything was just going like the idea of that scene um it was that everybody was going to be there sitting and just being completely in shock. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and so that was quite a, you know, fun scene to do because it's scandal, basically. Yeah. Um, no, but it was amazing. It, it, was, it was awesome. And we actually, fun fact, um, that scene is ending the way it does, right? But how we uh, filmed it, it was actually not the ending. So, like, the ending would be that he walks out of the speech, walks up of the stairs, like, behind us, and walks into the, into the school. And I was supposed to follow him up the stairs. And then when we were up on the stairs, we would look out at everybody. And then we would just go. That was so the, actually how we record it, but they cut it, like, so it ended in the speech, you know? Yeah, they chose the drama option <laughs> in the editing yeah, yeah, room, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. yeah, the other one was a little more Hollywood. This this <laughs> ending is a little more real in some way, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And I there's so many amazing emotional moments in this series, like... I was in bits in multiple different points of it. For you, really? what was the most difficult scene for you to shoot this series or the, the scene that meant the most to you? That's a really hard question. Um, what scene was the hardest? I feel like a lot of the, the deeper um, scenes uh, were hard because you really, I really had to put my heart out there and really mm. feel what was going on and really get in that feeling deep, like, and really just 
live in that world um for real so i so i could like feel it in some way so all of the deeper scenes i would say i really also like the scene when the last one when we uh main cast were having this scene together like when he was pointing him with the shotgun and all of that yeah that was quite dramatic <laughs> yeah <laughs> to say the least um <laughs> uh, it was it was a, a a really important moment for me uh, playing Simon because what's happening with Simon and, and Sara um, in that moment when he realized that uh, Sara has been you know lying to Simon, not telling him what's going on, and and you know that sibling thing, the sibling connection just really just disappeared. Uh, and it was like, I really had to go in that feeling like my sister is like my enemy. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and everything is just going to hell. So yeah, that scene was really strong. Mm. What, what went through your mind when you were watching that scene? The scene with I'm the shotgun. <laughs> I, I'm honestly, I'm going to yeah. say something that's really bad. And I obviously, I obviously don't encourage any level of violence whatsoever. But I hate <laughs> August so much. And I think he's such a slippery snake. Part of me was just a bit like, shoot him, <laughs> cover it up. Like, <laughs> let's make this some sort of revenge. <laughs> How to get away with murder subplot crossover. Let's get Viola <laughs> Davis in and let's just bury the body and pretend it never happened. Because I, I can't cope with him anymore. <laughs> so I was honestly at that point just like, just do it, do it. I fucking love it. I love that. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but aside from the drama of those moments, what is so special about this show? What I think anyway is regardless of how you identify um with your sexual orientation, it's such an amazing show for showing the messy parts of life and those difficult moments we all yeah. go through those coming of age moments working out who we are what we like what we don't like who we want to be and i think so many people can see parts of themselves reflected in the young royals for you when you watch it and you've been experiencing it being part of these characters what part of yourself do you see reflected in it how simon is with his family how he loves his family his mother his sister um and also when he performs at school i used i used to do that as well when i when i went to school um i used to perform and you know sometimes people laughed sometimes people were cringing when i was singing um uh, and that's that's what happened to simon in season one for example somebody screamed while he was singing and it was just like a really awkward moment um so I can relate to a lot of things that is happening in Young Royals for sure. And if I would be a young teenager watching Young Royals, I would, I would be how the fans are. Like I would freak out. I would be the craziest fan of the show because when I was a young teenager, I never saw a show like this ever. Mm. So I'm just blessed and super happy to be a part of this whole thing because it's a, it's a, it's a dream, really. And it's just crazy to think that people from the other side of the world uh, sees us in the series like, like such a... Because it's a huge deal for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and the series means a lot to those people. And it's just crazy to think that they see us in that sort of way. Like for me... I'm just me, you know, but it's just crazy to think that, oh, I'm in this show and people see me as something they really relate to and that they wish that, you know, we existed in a school for real and that they were our friends for, you know what I mean? Like, it's just crazy to think that people really, I don't know, it's just, it's just crazy to be a part mm. of this. Well, I think it's a very universal yeah. feeling, isn't it? Because I think everyone can relate to having a moment where they felt like an outsider or they've been made 
to feel different. And then I think the amazing message of the show is all about embracing difference and understanding others. What, what do you think yeah. you've learned to embrace about yourself that you were made to feel was different? Well, after filming the show, and especially season one, I, I've i become a lot more confident in my own skin mm. um, because of the cameras, because of the clothes that I was wearing every single day as Simon, uh, not wearing literally almost any makeup, uh, having breakouts, uh, messy hair, early mornings, you know, that's not us or me going to an event today where I fix my hair, have makeup on, great clothes, great lighting, and now I'm the best version of myself. That's the complete opposite when you record and when you film, um, especially in Young Royals, because we want to show people how we actually look, how teenagers look, how you can look an early morning without any makeup on or without fixing your hair too much or flashy clothes. They don't really exist, not a Simon at least. Um, and so that really helped me getting comfortable in my own skin. Like um, I can take pictures, people can take pictures of me when I'm not really the best version of myself mm. and I'm feel, I feel completely fine. Uh, I feel, I feel cute. I feel like my skin is nice, even though I have a little breakout here and there. Um, I've learned to accept that, you know, some days you have breakouts or you don't really feel really pretty or whatever. And some days you do. And so that's something that's really been hel helping me with my insecurities, basically. It is quite an exposing show in so many ways. Like you have to film intimate scenes yeah. and you have to feel like you're in a very safe space in order to do that. Has that kind of given you a new level of confidence in yourself and your body image and your own sense of self that you're able yeah. to put yourself out there like that? Yeah, it's it's really scary. You know, we've been, um, I, I personally, personally don't think that I have uh, well, there is nothing called a perfect body, but for me, like in my own body, I don't feel 100% um, satisfied with, you know, how I look. I don't think anybody does. Um, and so taking off your shirt or showing your legs in front of a camera, doing a, a you know, a really intimate scene, and you know that everybody's going to see that, it's scary. And, um, that's something that's helped me as well, you know, being comfortable in your own skin and just accepting and feeling sexy and pretty and, and feeling fine showing skin because, you know, you're beautiful the way you are. And that's really uh, cringy to say sometimes, but it's true. And it's true. you kind of uh, see that in, in yourself when you experiment or when you see your body or when you, you know, when you have to go there, get out of the safe zone and do something that scares you a bit can also help you a lot with mm -hmm. your self-love and confidence and, and stuff. So I'm really happy being a part of this, not only because I, because of the story and what everybody's feeling when they're watching the show, but also for myself, like my confidence and me as a human being, like I feel... I'm, I have more self-love today. Mm. That's such a great place to get to in life. And I think we all struggle yeah. on that journey at so many different points. And I think one of the things the show does so amazingly is it also references the mental health journeys they all go through as well. Yeah. And they all have stumbling blocks. They all have challenges to their mental well-being, and they have to learn to find that kind of inner mental strength too. What have been some turning points yeah. for you on your own relationship with your mental well-being? And how have you learned to look after it? Talking about it more and just accepting that that sometimes you have those uh, moments where you don't really feel as strong or as 
secure or you know safe or confident or or happy uh and that sometimes it's okay you know and that you if you want to you can always talk to somebody you should talk to somebody because it it helps um and also knowing that you're not alone also really helps like speaking about mental issues and and this those kind of things help because people finally get to realize like oh my god that's exactly how i feel like it's finally somebody that understands me some finally somebody that feels the way i feel mm. or you know and that it's really important to talk about those topics because um they haven't really been talked about a lot uh so yeah it's really important mm. i think it's even harder to talk about that stuff especially if you are a guy because i think there's so much pressure around the idea of what it is to be masculine and masculinity right and i feel like this show totally yeah. destroys what that stereotype should be and what that should mean as well and it really pushes the boundaries of oh yeah our expectations what masculinity is how much of a release has that been for you yeah like for me it's it's so obvious and it's for me in my head it's so kind of like normalized like i feel like i don't ever think about wait edwin is actually playing wilhelm and he's having some mental breakdowns that's that's interesting i've never ever thought thought about it that way like for me it's so natural to you know be depressed sometimes and not be happy sometimes and cry and for me it's just so hard to think that other people maybe don't really feel the way i feel about that because mm. there is a lot of people that think shit i I'm, i'm i'm a dude i cannot cry in front of in front of people i cannot stop crying like what block 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 it out you know and it's it's just crazy to me that there is people that think and feel like that and i feel really sorry for them because it's not i've i've been through that as well though i'm not going to lie like you know even today sometimes you know i don't feel like crying in front of people but i i don't really feel like that's about me being a guy because i'm not that typical masculine guy mm. um and i actually don't know why i feel like that but but i it's i don't know it's just it's also because i feel like it's intimate you know showing somebody how you feel or feeling or feeling sad or cry you know you you really you bl- blot yourself you're out there and if and if you cry in front of somebody and somebody laughs or if somebody says something weird or you don't feel like they they are that they feel uncomfortable with you crying in front of them in front of them then it gets so scary and then next time maybe you won't cry for, in front of somebody because you don't feel safe doing that mm. and so it's it's a complicated thing about this whole thing um and it's just so important to show that you know you you can feel you can cry in front of somebody you, you can feel sad in front of somebody you have to let yourself um you know be emotional mm. with somebody or and just it's it's a process i i also feel that sometimes being emotional in front in front of somebody is scary but you kind of have to you know because it's really important to get those feelings out so you can be happy <laughs> Yes, you need those moments to release and you also need to find your people in life and find the people who are going to support yeah. you in that journey too. And that's what the message of the whole show is kind of about and it's very obvious on and off screen that you two have built this incredible friendship. How do you think that friendship you created with Edwin has really helped you and how have you supported one another? Me and Edwin It's so hard it's so hard to speak <laughs> English and say our names in Swedish because you have to kind of like translate it but me and Edwin <laughs> um we are 
such a good friends, such good friends. Yeah. Um, and we really know where we have each other. And when you compare our friendship today and how it was during season one, we have developed our friendship so much and we've gotten to know each other even more. And I feel like that has made us even more comfortable, you know, working together and doing these scenes together and doing, in, you know, intimate scenes as well. Um, it, I feel like the chemistry, we can't, we can't show it even more because we... Because we really feel like, uh, I feel safe with Edwin. Um, and that makes it all even easier and and better to film. And mm. it's been amazing. Um, we laugh a lot more now, though, because we are really good friends. And we when we don't kiss each other for a year and then go back to kissing and <laughs> hugging and touching, it's fucking weird. <laughs> so we... <laughs> laugh a lot and we can we cannot take each other seriously like we look at each other and we're just laughing and the director gets so mad Roshta gets really mad um but it's it's a process that you have to get into um but it's so much fun and it's not scary at all it's just it's just a bizarre situation like it's just crazy like what the fuck are we doing are we gonna kiss now? Yeah, we're gonna kiss now. Okay, fuck it. Let's kiss, and we're just laughing. Um, yeah, but it's been it's been a uh, a funny, bumpy ride. Yeah, yeah. Well, you kind of have to embrace the awkwardness at times, don't you? Like, yeah, if you're yeah, not gonna yeah. Laugh yeah. about it. It's just gonna be weird. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. We like, and you know, I like to work. Like, if if I feel like there's a elephant in the room, like there's something, then. I have to say it like I have to say it out loud so it doesn't get awkward like for example um we both have been drinking coffee and then I'm like getting stressed out because okay now we're gonna make out and we drank coffee like 20 minutes ago and we all know what that means yeah you got coffee breath yeah and I'm not gonna <laughs> stand there pretending that it's not happening you know so I'm just gonna say like Okay, are we gonna take? Are we gonna eat some gum so we don't like throw up when we kiss each other? For example, because my breath stinks and yours too because we drank coffee like twenty minutes ago. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff. I like to say that so it doesn't get awkward. You know? Yeah. <laughs> honesty is the best policy. I mean, throughout this whole chat we've had, the main consistent thread is honesty is key, right? So you gotta be honest. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and it's so great you found that kind of wingman in life because you've also found so many wing people full stop I mean when I put out on Twitter earlier that you guys were coming on rain the amount of messages I got of people being like oh my god I'm desperate to ask this question I'm desperate to ask this question was literally insane like I was like oh wow. my god people <laughs> are thirsty for this so I'm gonna hit you with a couple of questions <laughs> that they asked and one okay. of them, which I think is very apt for you, is which song do you think sums up their relationship most? Dun dun dun. I feel like Simon kind of like, uh, in the second season, maybe in the beginning of the second season, Thank You Next by Ariana Grande, by mm -hmm. Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but then it doesn't really, uh, yeah, uh, really, he changes his mind after a while. Yeah. But in the beginning, thank you, next. Thank you, next. Well, um, get Ariana Grande on because that is a tune. And before <laughs> you go off to go get Ariana Grande on your Spotify, we always end on this final question. Okay. And that is, in the reign of your life, what is the one rule you'll always live by? What is the rule you'll always live by? Uh... What is yours? Mine is regret will always haunt you more than failure. It's a big one. Oh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Oh my gosh. Um, brush your teeth every morning. <laughs> <laughs> 
I love that. And definitely brush your teeth before you do kissing scenes, clearly, as we've learned, especially if you've got Yeah, clearly. <laughs> please, <laughs> please, yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been so thank great you talking so to much. you. I love the show. It's been and amazing. Can't wait for more. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy. Thank you so much for joining me for another amazing episode of Rain. I really hope you found something to take away from this episode. And if you have, let me know. You can always get me on socials at Josh Smith Hosts. I love to hear from you. And as always, if you've enjoyed this episode, please like, rate, subscribe, or follow wherever you get your podcasts from. And more importantly, please share this with someone you think needs to hear it. Let's get those convos going and I'll see you next time.